Without further ado, our guest today uh, had five seasons of Tabitha's Takeover. She was voted the fan favorite of Sheer Genius. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> um, she was voted the most addictive reality star um, by Logo's New Now Next Awards. She's been a correspondent at little shows like, I don't know, the Oscars and the Grammys. She's an author, and I don't know if all of you know that. Um, she's got memoirs. It's not really about the hair um, and the honest truth about life and business. She is a two-time host of Naha, which makes me very excited, and one of my favorite people ever. So without further ado, I am going to bring on... Hey, hey there she Hi. is. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Sorry, I had to do a little housekeeping in the beginning there. You know, we've... That's okay. And <laughs> I'm sorry I've got my earbud on, but my neighbor decided to mow his lawn right now. I mean, how rude when I'm speaking to you in PBA. I mean, come I on. Mean, and you know, come I'm, on. I'm kind of in the same boat because my husband just put in a load of laundry. <laughs> and when it finishes, it's like... Bang! That's okay. We're at home. Everyone uh, gets know, it. That is the way we live now. So how are you doing today, Tabitha? I'm good. It's Friday. I'm good. Ready for the weekend. <laughs> She's like, I'm ready for, for the weekend. So I, I had the pleasure of speaking to you uh, about a month ago, and you're just so interesting and so incredible. But I, I won't put you through all that, again, digging up your <laughs> childhood and your past. But... I would say if there if there's one thing um you are you are at the top of anyone in and that is really being able to build a brand and and turn being a stylist into this miraculous career that we're all just mm -hmm. in awe of. So, you know, there are a lot of people dreaming of winning a Naha, but there are obviously other ways to build your reputation and to build your brand, your brand. So you're known for helping people get their, mm -hmm. you know what, together. Mm -hmm. uh, my Nana would nicely say she IT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so let's help our viewers out and help them get their business on track, learn how to self promote and so forth. So what is building a brand? Can a person be a brand, even if they're not, you know, on television or on stages? You know, what is building a brand? So I believe a person is a brand, right? Each and every one of us, whether we're a salon owner, we're on TV, we're not on TV, we're a platform artist, we're whatever we are in our industry, we are a brand. Yeah. And I believe that any time someone is coming in, so our clients are coming into us and exchanging money for our services or expertise, which is what our clients do. We are a brand. Yeah. So yeah. we could be a brand working in another brand, right? We could be a stylist in a salon. So we're our own brand, but we're working for a larger brand and that's great. We can be working for a manufacturer, we're a brand, and then we align with a brand that has the same ethos as us and we become, right, joint. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I encourage all, um, all stylists, not just business owners, to look at themselves as a brand. So it does two things for me. Not only does it help you with um, building your brand, promoting yourself on social media, promoting yourself to clients, doing all of those. This can sound weird for some people, but look at yourself without the emotion because we get emotional, A, because we're creative and artists, B, because we're human sure. beings, right? right? So we get emotional for all of those things. But we need to disassociate a little bit with it and kind of get really honest about what could I do better? What am I doing great? How can I do it differently? How can I attract more of the clients I want to do? Why aren't I getting the clients that I really want, right? So right. when we look at ourselves as a brand, it allows you just to kind of step outside of yourself a little bit and really put those business glasses on and look at it and look at how you want to grow and curate and evolve that brand. 
I love business glasses. Um, many people put on beer goggles, and I think probably <laughs> business glasses. I love big. them. You know that. <laughs> They're both good, um, but business glasses are a good way to go. Hey, folks, um, Tabitha will answer your questions. I got some of your questions in advance. If you put them in the comment box, or even easier, if you just hit the little question mark box, it's easier for me. Blind as a bat in my contacts because you know, didn't want <laughs> the ring light, know. didn't want that ring light showing up in my glasses. Um, so it just uh, go ahead and ask your questions, and we'd love to get those in. So Tabitha, what's the first thing? Let's sort of walk through it. What is the first thing you should do if you want to be, you know, recognized? or a leader in your industry? What's that, what's that first step? Let's say I'm, you know, I've, I've, I've been a stylist for maybe three to five years. I've apprenticed, I'm, I'm getting decent at what I'm doing. What's, what's one of the first things someone should do? Lead by example, That's right? You, can, you can't, you have to lead <laughs> by example. You can't ask people to follow you or, or not even ask people to follow you want people to follow you, expect people to follow you, whatever it is, right. if you're not leading by example. You have to walk the walk and talk the talk. Right. Right? Otherwise, we all know we've gotten so much better with this. We know what is real and honest and genuine and what is really disingenuous. And authentic wins every time. Yeah. Every time. Right? It just does. Authenticity shines through and it, it wins every time. You can polish, right, your professionalism and polish your finesse and you can work on those things, right? But if you're not really genuine and really authentic and, and not really living what you're talking about, then that doesn't inspire people and it comes through as disingenuous. So I think you really need to live what you want to teach people, whatever that is, right, whatever yeah. portion of you that is. Um, I think the th other thing is people need to realise that, look, I've, I worked it out the other day and it was extraordinary, actually. It freaked me out. I st so I started hairdressing when I was 14. Right. right? I've told everyone that. It's been, like, <laughs> frigging. It's been a few years? <laughs> 38 years, right? 38 Wear years. Wear it, girl. Wear it. Own it. <laughs> so... Success didn't happen overnight. Right. Success is a journey. It's not a destination, right? I truly yeah. believe that, that building your brand and I've been working on building my brand and I'm still working on building that doesn't mean that that should stop you. It just should be a catalyst and motivation to keep it going and look at all the other areas of what is it you want to do? There's no right thing except what's right for you. If you want to be the best stylist behind the chair that specializes in blonde, then be that person. If yeah. you want to be an exceptional award-winning Naha hairdresser of the year multi-times, then that's what you work towards. You may not get there overnight. You may not get there in three years, but yeah. that shouldn't stop you. Such great advice. We have some questions pouring in already um, from Anna uh, Smith. I'll, I'll butcher the middle of your name, Anna, so I apologize in advance. What do you suggest to a stylist to believe more in herself and her capacity? That's such a great question, Anna. So yeah, first really of all, is. you have to believe it, right? And I know that yeah. sounds very simple, but what we tell ourselves become our self-fulfilling prophecy. So, and it just, it's true. It's human nature. That's just how it happens. So, you know, first we give ourselves an idea that brings on an emotion and then that becomes this narrative that we tell ourselves. So to build confidence, confidence happens the more you do what you do, the more comfortable you become with it, the more proficient you become with it you become more comfortable and more confident. So keep doing what you're doing and look at where you may want to polish those rough spots up, right? Look at where you might need a little bit work on a technique or 
whatever it is, right? Business ownership, yeah. management, communication with clients, whatever those little things are that seem a little challenging to you, don't let it stop you. Just keep polishing and refining it. And you do become more confident and more comfortable at what you do. That doesn't mean ego to me, right? That just means I feel really comfortable and I feel proficient with, with the skill that I have and how I share it with people and how I, you know, transform it from my brain into my hands onto my client, which yeah. is what we do. It's but, like that skill to the heart, isn't it? It's like <laughs> it is, but you you have to you have to talk yourself through it sometimes, and you have to believe it because we stop ourselves, right? It's like often when I talk to people and they say, "I want to go into Naha." Okay, great. What's stopping you? Oh, right. And then the laundry list comes out. Well, I'm not good enough, and I'm not this enough, and I'm not that Money. enough, and that's <laughs> not good, and it's going to cost too much. So I get the laundry list of all the things that are stopping them from tr even trying, right? So you're right. stopping yourself. You're giving excuses. Go and look at my Instagram post today about excuses. You're giving an excuse and stopping yourself from even being able to take the step to move forward, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to cost a lot. There are ways that you can do it cost effectively. There are people that would be more than willing to mentor you. There's ways that you could go from here to Naha, right? Do a shoot if you've never done one. Pull out your camera. Some people want to do Naha. They've never pulled out the camera and taken a picture of a client. Right. Right. Good start. So <laughs> start looking, looking at images, looking at how things transfer from real life onto screen life and what those dimensions look like and how things change and what you would do. There are all these little steps that you can take along the way that build up that confidence, right? That confidence muscle yeah, and build up your skill and then we'll take you to where you want to go. Yeah. I have. So, and Patrick, Patrick uh, Keon, he has many questions. I'm going to choose one that I think, and by the way, he, you are, his idol and oh. um, so we'll, we'll ask two part questions. I'll, I'll finish with the last part. Um, so he's saying as a leader now, so I'm imagining he's, he's, he's a leader in his space, his salon, his industry, his town. He has an employee that doesn't say much and refuses to engage. And then second part to that question, he wants to know who's your idol, Tabitha. So let's take the first part. Yeah. Right. So you have, <laughs> you have someone that is not communicating, right. And doesn't say very much. So right. there are two parts to that. I would say, is that a problem? Is that creating challenges? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And what are those challenges? And the other thing as a leader, you always need to take a step back and go, why? Right. How can I inspire this person differently? How can I get them to open up? Why aren't they opening up? Is it because they're incredibly shy? Is it because they're not comfortable? They're not confident. They don't want to look like they're messing up. So they don't want to ask the question and that makes them retreat and stay in their shell. Right. What I find really valuable is all of my team respond to different things because they're all different human beings. So even if I put my practices in place that I, here's how I want you to work through things, they're individuals and I need to find out what are their motivating factors, what are their behaviours and how to communicate with them in the best way to get the most out of them and yeah. get them to do what I need them to do as, yeah. as their boss. Hey, Antoinette. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Good to see you again, dear. <laughs> so, you know, it that's what that's what the biggest thing I would ask if someone is that quiet and reserved is why. You know, often right. often people retreat because they don't want to take up the space because what if they screw up? What if they make a mistake? What if you all of a sudden notice me and call me out, right? It's much better if I kind of shrink into the background. Yeah. than to come out. So, And, and I'm with you, Tabitha. You know, I, I've had employees who were just, they're just not extrovert. They, they don't engage in that type of conversation, but 
they would do the most badass haircut. And they had clients who loved them for that. Clients who brought books who didn't need to be spoken to, right? <laughs> who yeah, would rather. And that's okay. That's, you know? that's why I would kind of go back and go, are they? doing something wrong is there something that they're not doing or is it just that they're quiet right because there are right? a lot of quiet geniuses before we get to your idol maybe we can save that for a little later we have so many questions i wanted to bring up from your seminars which are fantastic and if people haven't registered they need to go to tabitha.com and get all that um so you, a quote from you, figure out who you really are and how you present yourself to the world. I think this is so relevant in branding oneself and self-promotion. Can, can you tell us a little bit about what you mean by that quote? So it goes back to the authenticity, right? right? It's, no, it's no good um, presenting yourself as someone that does X, Y, and Z Right. If that's not what you're really into when you're just doing it to make money or to get the clients in or to keep everyone else happy, right. you're, not, you're not going to be able to sustain that for the long term and you're not going to be successful. So you need to figure out who are you and what is it that you want. A lot of people that I work with think if they specialise in something, if they have a niche, it's going to mean that they can't do anything else. That's not true at all. It just means that you're an expert. People love experts, right? Good point. So yeah. I, I use this analogy a lot. If you go to a diner, right, and, or a chain restaurant that has a menu that is like, you know, this big and this thick <laughs> and you're starving and you start flipping through and you go, oh, my God, pasta, oh, my God, stir fry, oh, my God, tacos, <laughs> Oh my God, steak, right? Because you're just hungry. So everything is attracting you. But you don't, you end up not knowing what to order because it's overwhelming and there's too much. We also know that they can't do Mexican, Italian, Asian, steak, seafood, everything really well. So it's just a little bit of everything, but none of it is really top quality. Yeah. Right? We know that. So we end up ordering a salad. <laughs> we are right i was trying to be nice so if you want like this amazing bowl of homemade pasta you go to that delicious little italian restaurant that all they specialize in is that niche right yeah they may have a chicken dish and they may have a seafood and they may have something else but they're known for this incredible homemade pasta right that's what we need to look at Right. If you want to specialize in blondes, it doesn't mean that you can't do a redhead or a brunette or a chestnut or a pink or something else. It just means that you're telling clients out there, hey, look at me. I do blondes and I do them exceptionally, exceptionally well. And I will get you from here to here and make sure your hair has great integrity. Yeah. Right. And that's what I mean by being authentic. It, it's looking at what turns me on, what lights me up, what excites me. What are the clients that I really want to do more of them and less of them? Yeah. And that's, that's how you start to build that brand. So true. How, we have so many questions. I'm going to try and get into them. How can you be confident? And I'm sorry, Logan, maybe if you could just put in the name of who's asking. Um, but how can you show that confidence without sort of rubbing everyone else in the salon the wrong way? Uh, to, so to me, they're two different things. I do understand that question. Confidence, I have no problem saying I'm great at what I do. Right. That I'm not trying to be cocky. And it also doesn't mean that I don't have a lot to learn right? I can always learn new things. I learn new things every day and every hair show. And every time I engage with someone, it sparks something new. Mm -hmm. But it means that I can say, I'm really proficient and I hone my skills and I practice my skills all the time. Yeah. And I'm confident in that, right? But I'm also not ego driven that I can't say, wow, that's new. I don't know how to do that. Can you teach me? 
or that isn't my speciality. So I'd love to learn more about it. Yeah. There are two different things. Someone that walks in and goes, I'm the best there is and I've got nothing to learn and I know everything is coming from ego. They're yeah. going to drive you up a wall within two seconds. <laughs> and they're usually not. And I mean, <laughs> No, because they're so insecure that they've got to pretend they know everything to right. you know, cover over their insecurities. Yeah, um, which, which brings me back to one of the questions I had. Do you think it's more the work or the personality or what is that balance? Because it, it can't just be one, right? Such a good question. I think the magic combination is both. I mean, you know, and we've all seen this. I have seen some unbelievable hairdressers, like technically just amazing that do not know how to communicate with people and don't have the clientele that they should based on the work that they produce. Then I've seen people that <laughs> just are great communicators and do really subpar work with full yeah. books. So for me, it's a combination of both. It, it's knowing how to communicate and, and that, that doesn't mean sharing all your personal stuff with clients and kind of, you know, sharing all the goings on in your life. It means how right. to communicate effectively to find out what a client wants, how they feel, how they're going to take care of their hair, how you're going to get them from A to B and draw that information out of them. Right. And then transfer it, transfer it back to them. Yeah. I mean, look, I I've never been a touchy feely <laughs> you know, with my clients, it, it's always been about them. So my communication has always been the consultation, finding out what they want, finding out what they need, how they want to feel, what they want to look like. And then the service has always been about asking a question and letting them talk. Right. Which I think people have a hard time listening and, you know, part of that relationship is to listen and i think it's very smart that you do it in a way that actually results in beautiful hair which i i, I don't think i could expect anything less from you uh narissa is asking i'm gonna i'm gonna you're it's a big question narissa and we're gonna try and stay on building the brand so i'm gonna hit on the part on how do you feel with the hair industry has changed from social media uprising mm. to small independent professionals so i think social media is an unbelievable marketing tool for all of us and our businesses depending on how we use it right so we'll kind of go back to your other question about being authentic and knowing who your brand is and building it you have to decide right. if you're do i want to reach clients or do i want to reach my peers and industry professionals i'm not saying one or the other is right or wrong, but it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking to build your clientele, right, you're going to be having a different conversation through social media. Yeah, so true. So, I mean, look, I think social media is such a great tool and it's so valuable and it's free and it's a virtual, it is our virtual business card, right? And we can actually you can have a portfolio of work and a body of work without ever doing a photo shoot on social media. Yeah. Because you can document all your clients and your transformations and your makeovers and all the things you do. And that's incredibly powerful to show a potential or an existing client, but it yeah. depends on how you use it and what you use it for. If you use it to be Insta famous, Good luck with that. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, still still cutting up is asking, how can one build their book when they are a small fish in a big pond? Um, so you're not a small fish. Stop, think stop thinking that you're a small fish, right? There, there is more than enough pie for all of us. There really is. Good point. But what slice of pie would you like? 
What flavour is it? How do you like it cooked? Do you like ice cream with it or whipped cream? Right? So, again, we start to dig down into it when you're talking about your brand. There is enough, there are enough clients for all of us. But what is it that you're trying to tell your clients? How is it that you're trying to attract them? What are you doing to attract that right client for you? As I said, when I started, you can be an independent salon owner, booth renter, work in a salon, whatever it is that you are, you are a brand, right? right? So it doesn't mean that you're a small fish. It means that if you want more people to come into your pond, how are you luring them in? How are you, how are you using your voice and your brand and your social media and the work that you're doing to shout out to those other people and go, hey, I'm over here come to me because this is what I do really well. Hey, yeah. come and look at me and check me out. Exactly. What is the, what is like social media? Are there any other ways that you can reach out on a, on a budget? Maybe you don't, you can't afford advertising necessarily to make yeah. some noise in that giant lake. So I think, again, it depends on what you're looking to do. So I, I'm just going to talk about building a business, right? If right. you're trying to build a business and get more clients in. Yeah. So obviously social media would be the first one. The second one is networking. Okay. So many people have businesses and people don't even know their business is there because they're not out there meeting other business owners or meeting other people within the community to say, hey, I've, I've got a salon owner over here. Come and check me out. So networking, good old-fashioned, you know, face-to-face -face when we can do it. Right. Right? Shake your hand when we can do it and say, hi, I'm Tabitha and I'm, you know, I have a business here. I've never gone around and met everyone. When I first came to the States, I, first of all, I was right off the plane. Right. Right? Had nothing and no one. So the way I built a clientele was to walk around town and introduce myself to people and shake hands and meet people and pass out business cards. And a lot of people say no, and that's okay. You have to get over that, right? And just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Referral programs can be great in salons as well, but there's a way to do it. You never give a client more than three cards, Okay. Right? Because if you give too many, it makes a client feel like it's a commitment. If you say to me, do you have, I'm trying to build my clientele and I love doing your hair so much. Do you have three people that you could recommend for me? Her hair, my sister and my best friend. Right. They'd love it here. Right. If you give someone a stack of cards, they look at it and it's overwhelming and they're like, oh, no, too much Put commitment. To <laughs> it feels like a job. I'm yeah. out, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to disappoint you and I don't know if I can get that many people in. So a client's turned off. So you do it three at a time. doesn't matter if you do it 20 times, but you do it three at a time. Yeah. Right? So that, that's a really important thing. Um, so networking, any kind of events, like if, if you're in a community or in an area and there's, again, depends on who your target client is, but if there was a school, right, and, and that's what, who you want to target, you want to target mums, then that's where you start to look at what you can do in that community to build those clients and get them in. Right, but join that chamber of commerce, right? Like a hundred percent. Look, women's business, women's business bureaus. Most small communities have them. Chamber of commerce, better business bureaus in in a lot of communities. They're all there, and they're all the ways that you can join and be active and having a conversation with other industry leaders and other business professionals, so that they get to know your business. Yeah, so smart. Um, let's see, we have so many questions. Um, so we have, um, so, um, building a community, I think, I think that you've covered that. So it's really like you're saying, join the chamber, join the women's organizations. Um, 
I think and give back to the community, right? Charity is a great way to do it as well. If there is a charity that, again, has to be authentic, near and dear to your heart, yeah, that really resonates with you and you have a business and there is any kind of fundraising or a cut-a-thon or a day of giving back or however you can do it, that helps to build a community and also spread the name of your business as well because people know that you stand for something bigger than just a business and that's important yeah tabitha wes is asking have you ever suffered from burnout what did you do to change that about five minutes ago before i got on here <laughs> oh thanks <laughs> no, so you changed it. No, you, you made me feel better. Um, yes, I suffer from burnout. All, look, I won't say all the time because it's not consistent, but several times I've suffered from bad burnout. And I think a lot of us in the industry confuse it with losing our passion. Right. Right. So a lot of people say to me, oh, I've lost my passion. And when you start to talk to them, they haven't lost their passion. They're still really passionate about their clients and doing hair and their business. They're just overwhelmed and overworked. Right. And tired. Right. So stepping back is always really good. However you can, um, whether it's a weekend off, right? right. Just step out of your business and take the weekend off and kind of forget about it for a weekend if you can if it's going on a vacation looking at other things is always really inspiring for me i don't need to look at hair to feel creative yeah. i can read a book i can watch a great movie i can look at architecture i can travel all of those things get my creative juices going and nine times out of ten i'll i'll read a book and it will be a period piece and i'll start fantasizing about what they wore, what their hair looked like. Oh, I wonder if you could do that with a modern twist to it. How would that look if you, right? And yeah. you start getting that passion back. It comes back. Uh, Mikey is saying, if you haven't already read it, you must. It's not really about the hair. You oh. have a huge fan. I thought you Mikey. were giving me a, thank you, Mikey, but I thought <laughs> you were giving me like a weekend read. I got all excited. I was like, ooh. <laughs> I'll do download that next on time. My I Kindle. promise. Um, and Felicity is thanking you for the conversation back in March about uh, referral cards. She used to literally hand out a stack of them. So she's seeing improvement there. So Amazing. people are it. very excited. Um, someone asked, um, I do great work, but I still can't seem to find a big clientele. Is that is that relating to sort of just being talented and not having that energy would you would you recommend Sometimes. a partnership for this person of some sort or um no i wouldn't i mean i first place i wouldn't go would be a partnership i would i would start so i would put the business glasses on right okay. that we talked about <laughs> and the brand glasses and i'd step outside of myself and i'd say okay so i do great work but what is stopping from clients coming in? Is it the environment? Is it the experience? Is it the prices? Is it how I'm communicating with them? Is it other people in the salon, right? So mm -hmm. I'd start to kind of go through a checklist of if I do great work, but what could the other things be that are stopping people from coming in? Then mm -hmm. I would look at my numbers. So I'd say I do great work, but I don't have a very good repeat business. So why yes. aren't people coming back? Maybe yeah. my work isn't as great or maybe I'm miscommunicating what they're saying. I'm not saying whoever asked that question, that's the case. I'm just giving you right. the right. business, right? The business path to look down. Um, and then, you know, go through that checkbox of asking yourself all those possible scenarios of what it could be. If the work is great, am I not communicating well? Am I not creating an experience for clients? Is it the environment that I'm in? Is, you know, what is it that could be this reason um, and see where it changed? The other thing I do is ask clients, listen, yeah. you know, clients are, 
when you ask your clients for feedback and there's ways that you can do it so they can do it anonymously if you don't want to put them on the spot or if they feel uncomfortable giving you critique, you have to be prepared to hear the truth and what they're going to say. But again, with those business glasses on in the vein of growth and clients give great feedback. Go to the source. Yeah. Um, Mikey, um, congratulations, Mikey. I am buying a salon um, during the UK lockdown. So thanks for joining us from the UK. Congratulations. (laughs) Congratulations. The process is unfortunately currently on hold. Tabitha, please, any advice when we eventually open as it will be very different situation from normally opening a salon. We couldn't agree with you more, Mikey. So look, it's going to be different because of the restrictions that we're going to have on us with PPE and social distancing and all of those kind of things. The tenants are the same though. First thing for any business owner or anyone wanting to open a business, and it's not sexy to talk about it, but it's really crucial. Know your numbers. Know your numbers know how much you need to bring in per chair, per hour, whatever it is, depending on the size. That's number one. Then to make, before we even get to profit, to not only cover your costs but to pay your team and yourself because you're part of the team. So the owners that don't pay themselves, you are a working employee, right? I'll use that loosely if you're behind the chair as an owner. So you need to be paid as well. You need to know all those foundational numbers of how much it costs to run your business, what you need to bring in per, as I said, hour, day, week, month, year to cover the nut and have enough left over, not only to pay you and everyone else, to stash some aside, I call it a swimming pool fund (laughs) because it may not be COVID-19, but any business owner out there knows something always happens. It's business. Plumbing, lighting. Right, it's business. uh, Electrical, air conditioning. Shit happens, excuse (laughs) me, but it does. I mean, it's business. (laughs) So you need to prepare for that and you need to prepare for that financially if you can and a lot of us get away from the numbers because they're not sexy and they're like oh I'm so busy behind the chair (laughs) right Right. like I'm so busy I've got so many clients coming in (laughs) but you you don't kind of break it down enough to know what it is and that's where we get in a little bit of trouble so have all those have all those you know formats in place and I think anyone starting a business start how you want it to end And by that, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to start really cheap and I'm going to discount everything to get the clients in and then I'll put my prices up and then I'll do this and then I'll do that. Then never happens. Mm. Mm. And if you're building your brand, your brand will change and morph over time, right? Right. But your brand is your brand. If you're going in and you're going to go really And again, there's no right or wrong, but if you're going in really inexpensive and then you say, oh, yeah, but I want to be like, you know, super expensive and charge hundreds of dollars per service and do all of this, that's a big jump, right, from here to there. It's a really big jump. So you need to look at all of those things. Right. (laughs) And start where you want to be because that's how you build the clientele as well. Yeah, that makes so sense. True. It totally, and it so makes sense to me. You know, I have both professional and retail experience, and I, you know, if you were gonna open a business, any of you, and 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 you know, George is thanking for such great advice to pay attention to the numbers, folks. No, no, you know, no company is opening a store. Well, they do, but they shouldn't. But many of these chain stores go in, and they know exactly exactly how much they're making per square foot based on their retail layout and putting their best sellers forth. So if you're one of these who thinks you don't need retail, if you think you don't need extra services, I I would beg to differ and say you do, right? Because you need profitability within that space. Look, it's not, (laughs) 
it, it kind of goes for you or right. wrong for you where it goes back to the authentic, right. right? So for me, I knew that I wanted to take my time, charge a premium. Every client had an experience. So it was everything. It was from the music that I played to the coffee that I served and how it was. It was all curated to create right. an overall experience of everything, right? Yeah. And if clients would call and they would say, oh, can't you just squeeze me in for a trim? I'm sorry, I can't squeeze you in because I take appointment only and I don't do trims because whether I cut a quarter of an inch or five inches off, I'm technically and methodically going through a haircut, cutting every single hair and doing Amen. it to a prescription and a formula, <laughs> right? Hallelujah. <laughs> so that was the standard that I set for myself. It wasn't for anyone else, but it was the standard I set to myself. And if clients came in, then they would understand that that was the experience they were getting every single time, every single client. It right. wasn't first time, right? It was every time. Yeah. And that was, that was the brand that I built for my clients and for myself and for my staff. Um, but that's where you need to decide what that brand is because it's important, right? Yeah. Because you can't go, oh, I'm, as we said, you can't go, oh, I'm going to just get everyone in a discount and then I'll put my prices up, right, when I start to get busy. It doesn't work. Mm -mm. And clients don't want to come. And that's where you need to know the numbers as well because that's where we get in trouble sometimes as an industry and as business owners because we don't know our numbers enough because it, it's icky talking about money and it's, you know, yeah. it makes people uncomfortable and all of those kind of, or we think Especially we're not good enough and we're not worth it and yeah. <laughs> all of those kind of things. But we have to know them um, also as part of our brand. Right. Right. right? So Tabitha, I mean, so much good stuff. We have twice as many people watching this when we first started. And I, I want to just, as we wrap up this chat, I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours. And I think we need to have you back um, because there's so much good stuff and you're so smart and congratulations on your life coaching. I just, I think it's so incredible what you do. What's, let's just say first step thing we need to do, something we can do tomorrow something we should check in in a year can we can we sort of bring yeah. people up to speed so let's identify identify the brand you want to be right again i'm going to ask you to put the business glasses on step outside of it what is it that i want even if you don't have it right now it's okay like do i want to what am i going to specialize in if that's something am i a family salon where I do from babies to grandmas, that's perfectly fine. If that's what you are, that's a conversation. That's how you reach out to that client, right? Am I a high-end luxurious experience that is going to charge a higher price? That's totally fine as well, right? But that's a different conversation with, with a client. Right. Um, I'll use the analogy, it's no good going to Gucci right? We know if we walk into Gucci, the prices we're going to be paying. We can't walk, walk into Gucci and expect to get target prices. No. Both are super valid. Both are really important. Both have a place. Right. But that's where that branding comes in because then everything you're going to do, look, we could talk for hours. I'm not going to get into colors and logos and all of those, those kind of things another time. I'm just getting, wanting you to wrap your head around you are a brand. What do I want the brand to be? What do I want to stand for? Do I want to be the best goddamn balayager out there, right? Then that's what I'm going to focus on and show my clients. Am I a precision hair cutter that just does incredibly beautiful precision haircuts and short hair? then that's what I, I'm going to fall into. It doesn't mean you can't do long hair. It doesn't mean you can't do layers. It doesn't mean you can't do freehand. It just means here's my piece of the pie. 
right? And it really turns me on and I love it. And that's what I'm going to focus on. So everything I post, how I have conversations with clients, how I interact on social media is going to fall into that. So first thing, identify it. Second thing is start to put it into practice. Remember, I want everyone to remember this out there, super important. If you're trying to talk to your clients on social media, they're not hairdressers. They don't get turned on by seeing hair picture after hair picture after hair picture Back after of hair picture. <laughs> oh, my God, it's so frigging boring for a client, right? When I teach classes, I say us as the hairdressers with the – wonderful wizards if we were harry potter right we're the wizards and we're fabulous our clients are muggles (laughs) they're amazing and we love them but Mm. they don't get turned on by seeing all hair all the time agree so we need to balance out what we're showing them if you're just doing it for all your hair buddies out there and to get other hairdressers to like you that's great but that that's not going to make you any money so rethink that If you're having a conversation with a client, the reason you need to know, so I'm into natural hair, right? And I'm into natural products and really taking care of the environment and I'm a vegan and I love yoga and they're the clients that I want that are kind of low maintenance, you know, modern day hippy dippy girls that love yoga, come in in their yoga pants, drink a smoothie. That's who I'm going to talk to, right? So I'm going to do all these pretty soft baby lights and blondes and natural looking colors. I'm going to talk about all the organic products that I have in my salon. I'm going to talk about how my salon is green and the environment in my salon is great for the environment. I'm also going to put up a smoothie recipe and I'm going to do this is what powers me through the day to take care of all my beautiful clients. Yeah. Right now I'm having a conversation with my clients through social media and through my branding. That's why it's so important. And remember this, branding is an emotional connection. It's not trying to force someone and beat them with a stick going, come into my salon, let me do your hair, right? It's an emotional connection before they've even walked in. That's what social media is great at because they can get a feel for your business, a feel for you and a feel for the work you do and what you stand for so that when they come in, they're like, oh, my God, it's you, (laughs) right? I know you already because I follow you. Yeah. Every product we buy has an emotional connection behind it. I don't care what it is. You buy the milk that you just grab for that milk time time and again in that grocery store because that's the milk my mum used to buy and that's the memory I have. Or that's the milk I'm just used to seeing in my refrigerator all the time. And if they're sold out, I mean, it all comes from the same cow, but God forbid I buy a different one. Exactly. Right? So... Remember that branding is creating that emotional connection and storytelling to a client before they come into your business. So amazing. Tabitha, I wish we could talk all day. Unfortunately, you know how Instagram is. We are going to save this to our IGTV. I am going to ask you right now in front of all these lovely people if we can continue this conversation once things get back. Oh, I would see. love to. I, I love branding, so okay. I can, we, we need we can to. do it as many times as you want. I love it. We will call this 2.0. You are so incredible. Thank you so much 